resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ on the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, Psalm number 119, God We Praise You, Psalm number 119.
who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Uh, but 
Um, when, uh, when parents use first, middle, and last names, that makes you sit up and take notice. In our house, uh, my sister and I actually didn't have middle names, but, but, but when these Neapolitan expressions came out, we knew there was so we didn't know what they meant. They defied translation, but we knew we were in trouble. So this, when the Neapolitan Italian came out, we better watch out because there was going to be a wooden spoon coming from somewhere. Uh, and then my parents, of course, I don't know about you, but your parents tend to know these things, don't they? Um, the evil eye. They perfected it to like it was an open work of art, especially when we were out at somebody's house. It was the eye. If you got the eye today, you knew your, your time was limited on earth. Nothing good was going to happen from this. I, my sister didn't get the evil eye much. I, I mostly got it. I don't know why. Okay, but names, we were talking about names. I remember my, my cousin, uh, his name was Carmine Jude, but everybody called him CJ. And one day he, uh, they were, we were about the same age, and they were at our house, and, and CJ was misbehaving, and his mother said, Carmine Jude Soma. And all of us, all the kids, just stopped. Because he was getting called out, but, but we knew something was happening. So we just went, okay. And she, and she said, I'll never forget this, and she denies this to this very day. She says, come over here and stand on this dirty, filthy spot I see on Aunt Rose's floor. <laughs> she's a piece of, she's still around, she's a piece of work. So our names define us. Our names identify us. My name uh, was not Blaze, I was not baptized Blaze. I took that when I became a Franciscan. The most religious, as you know, years ago, I, was, I think I was one of the last ones, changed our names. And why we changed our names is because we became new people as religious, right? Yes? That's what we did. That's basically what it was. And so um, I, I actually, my name has changed officially to Blaze. So it's, and I'm not going to reveal what my name was before for less than $100, but okay. Um, so, so we just heard the call of silence. I'm a little confused. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, this is a call from the, for Simon to follow him. Even, uh, even uh, what's his name, Samuel was a little confused about what was going on. Um, and, and he gives such, uh, Jesus gives Simon another name. The name of, that meant that he was, the church he was going to form was going to be on this person, this rock. And now that we look at Peter, we go, oh, wow, Jesus really knew what he was doing. And like Peter and Samuel, you and I, we are called by name, by Christ, yes, we're called. And God knows us better than, than anyone else. Even our parents knew us better than we knew ourselves. Our parents always knew when we were lying. Our parents knew we were sick. In fact, one time, I didn't want to go to school. And so I said, I have a temperature, I feel so sick, oh God. So instead of putting her cheek to my, my forehead, that most mothers would do, she got the thermometer and stuck it in my mouth. And then went out of the room, and I got the thermometer and I put it on the right aid next to me. And I heard it coming up the back of my mouth. And she looked at it, she said, you go to school. I said, that's my temperature, she's 110. You shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> I guess I kept going too long. She, she was no artist older. So parents, parents know when we're hurting, they know, they know when they need to. It's really interesting. Parents know these things, I don't think it's know these things. Parents are also our best cheerleaders. When we say, Oh, when we said as children, I cannot do this, I don't know how to do this, I am not good at this, our parents would tell us, okay, fine. What are you good at? They'd find the, the talents and skills that we had, and they would build on that. And they would give us kind of some sort of feeling that, well, okay, we're going to survive this life. Now, of course, not only children feel that way, we feel that way as adults. That, yeah, no, I don't want to do this. I don't think I can do this. And, uh, we, we find every excuse in the book not to do whatever it is that we need to do. Even St. Peter. St. Peter did it all the time. No, 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 Lord, no. I don't think I want to do this. Yeah, you are, though, Peter. When God calls us by name, he's calling, calling us to be honest with ourselves, to be our true selves, to be the people that he wants us to be. 
And we have to take that kind of very courageous step to do this. Yes? Please say yes. That's, that wasn't a question. That was a declarative. Please say yes. yes. Thank you so much. Let me see, we're going to have a problem here, okay? Basically, you and I are called, pardon my back, we're called to share in the life of Jesus Christ, yes? Yes. But sometimes we kind of trip on that a little bit. And you and I receive our call when? When do we receive our call? Baptism. Baptism is when we all got called to be the Catholic Christians that we're called to be. Now, right? now how we live out the vocation takes a, a little while, right? It takes a bit, of, a bit of time for us and, and, and the Holy Spirit to help us figure out what it's going to be like. But we're all, we all experience the same thing. We all experience this wonderful thing we call our faith journey. And as rough as it is sometimes, or as smooth as it is sometimes, it's unique to each of us. But we're all doing it alone? No. We never live our lives alone in this church, in the church, in, in, in our faith. We live in communio, eh? in communion. When, when Christ said that we need to be uh, compassionate, we need to be compassionate. The two words from Latin that the word compassion comes from was compassio, to suffer with the another. So we we're not islands by ourselves in this, in this great big church. We're all connected. And we're connected not by our common faith in Jesus Christ only, but we're also connected to each other. So if we are going to be compassionate people, we have to start with the people around us, yes? Yeah. To suffer with. Not that we have to suffer exactly what they're suffering, but, but to at least be there. We don't have to say a lot. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. Just to be with the other. And, and, and even though we're doing it uniquely in our own way, we're still in communion, in communion. Huh? But with all the graces that we receive and, and the, the path that we choose in life, we can't live God's calling alone. And I just want to kind of punch that, I want to punch that just one last time, and, and so that we, we realize, I mean, I'm, of course I'm talking to the choir here, but just so that we, we don't forget this. And we see this example, there's a couple of examples, very small ones. Um, how does Andrew get his call in, in the gospel? How did we hear that just now? He got it out. Because he was talking to John the Baptist. Jesus didn't say a word. The gospel writer said he just walked by. See, John doesn't give, excuse me, oh my, John doesn't give us the story of Jesus' baptism in the Jordan by John. The, the story of Jesus, of Jesus coming forward and being kind of starting his, his ministry, he just walks by and John's gospel and says nothing. And that's, and John said, there is the Lamb of God. And that's why Andrew follows him. Jesus said nothing, right? Except, we, what do you want? We want to know where you're going. Oh, come on, follow. As easy as that. And then how does, what is, how does Peter get this? Peter gets the call, not by, you know, angels from heaven. Peter gets the call because his brother went to him and said, we found the Messiah. And Peter goes running there too. I don't know what these guys were doing during the day. They just had nothing to do. They were just running around following Jesus. But thank God they did. And these are two easy, simple examples of, of, of the importance of our, our, our Catholic Christian spiritual lives. How we live it out, we live it out. But we're always doing it with, with everybody else. We're all on that same journey, right? Yes. So our vocations that we all have, whatever they are, Married, single, priest, religious, whatever you are, whatever vocation you have, we do it together. Always moving closer in our relationship to Jesus Christ and to one another. Yes? Yeah. Amen.
do we, uh, do we all believe that what we profess in our profession of faith? I will order short his disciples that in him they would find what they're looking for. Looking for our needs and to be fulfilled, we turn now to our most gracious Lord to fulfill our needs. For those who dedicate their lives to the work of the church, and for all who respond to the call of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for leaders who listen to the needs of their people and respond to them with honesty and humility and a spirit of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, for peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the righteous who struggle against racism and violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serve our country, especially our domestic first responders and those in the armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our faithful community who put their commitment to justice into practical action, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Jean Veronica Sova and Jude Lantieri, who are remembered in this Eucharist, may they be welcomed into eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold deep within our hearts, as well as all of our intentions, both spoken and unspoken. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you gave us your Son in the Eucharist. Strengthen us through this sacrament to do your will on earth and graciously answer the prayers we make through Christ our Lord. As we prepare the table of the Lord, please join in singing Psalm number 132, Beautiful Savior. Almighty and eternal God, in Christ our Lord. 
for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we now claim. Scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed sisters and brothers, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Commanded, formed by God's word, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord. We pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, you say to us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, which are many, but look in our faith the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will and the reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. So for Judson's time, peace.
though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
couple of announcements. The church office is closed on the 18th uh, in observance of Martin Luther, King Day, uh, Martin Luther King Day. But there will be a funeral that day for Pat Christie? Christie? Christie. Okay, at 11.30. Donation substantiation letter. Substantiation? I never heard that word. If you uh, would like to receive an end of the year donation substantiation letter uh, for the year 2020, uh, please uh, email Daniela Mann, Daniela Mann, uh, at, uh, yeah, you will, you'll get her. She's in the there are no bulletins. Uh, Daniela at uh, ourladystar.com. And she'll let you know if you could have one. <laughs> She's the gatekeeper. Uh, and we will not be mailing out a tax donation receipt letter unless specifically requested. Leaving the church, please take your missiles, your cell phones uh, with you, and your purses, and your eyeglasses, and your car keys. Because they leave car keys. I don't know how you get into your cars if you leave your keys in here. Uh, and uh, please do not congregate in the Narthex or in the parking lot after Mass. Just uh, go to the uh, 5 o'clock um, or you can eat buffet. It doesn't say that, but I just say it. Pour on us, O oh Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread of one mind and one heart. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you always and in all ways, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then it's been this week in God's peace. Here we go, everybody. As we go to serve the Lord, please join in singing. 